Hello everyone. We all know that pointers are very important feature in C++. They are very powerful. They enable you to do very low level operations which are not possible in other languages. However, pointers are often troublemakers. Let's look at our example. We have a dog and the dog has a constructor and destructor and a bug function. Now let's say we have a function foo and inside the function we create a dog. Let's call it gunner. And then we did a bunch of different things and then we delete the dog. And then we did a bunch of other things and then we want to use the dog again. So we call p bark. This is silly, right? Because the dog gunner has been deleted, how can you use the p again? So p is a dangling pointer. And uh, if you're using a, an object that's deleted, the result is undefined behavior. If we don't delete p, then the bark function will be executed OK. But by the end of this function, the dog gunner is never deleted. So the storage of the dog is never deallocated. So the result is a memory leak. It may seem silly in our simplistic example here, but these two kind of bugs happen a lot in C++ programming. If you think about it, what is the main trouble here? The main trouble is with the delete. We were not able to delete the dog at the appropriate time. If we delete the dog too early, we have a dangling pointer. If we forgot to delete at all, then we have a memory leak. But the problem is keeping track of when to delete every object is not only hard, it is a tedious work. A programmer should never do tedious work. Tedious work is meant to be done by the computer. This is why we need smart pointers. If you include the memory header, you can use the different flavor of smart pointers. Today we'll mainly talk about shared pointer. Now let's look at an example of using shared pointer. Let's delete all these. The way to use a shared pointer is very simple. All we need to do is wrap up the raw pointer with a shared pointer. Shared put dog p and p is constructed with a new object of dog gunner. The way the shared pointer works is it keeps track of how many pointers or how many shared pointers are pointing to the object. And when that number becomes zero, that object will be deleted automatically. So at this point, the count equal to one, because we have one shared pointer p that is pointing to gunner. And by the end of the full function, because p will go out of scope, so there will be no pointer or no shared pointer pointing to the gunner. So the count becomes zero. And at this point, the dog gunner will be destroyed. In this case, the pointer is not really shared because we only have one pointer that's pointing to gunner. Suppose we have another shared pointer, dog p2, and p2 is also pointing to gunner, the dog. And now we have a situation that the pointer is shared. And suppose p2 barked. So at this point, the count become 2. And at this point, the count become one again because p2 goes out of scope so there's only one pointer that's pointing to gunner and by the end of the full function 
Again, the count becomes zero and the dog is destroyed. And if we call the foo function in the main function and then run the program, it prints out dog is created, dog rules, dog rules, and dog is destroyed. And the shared pointer actually has a member function which can report how many shared pointers are pointing to the object. So if I print out p dot use count, this actually will print out two. Notice that I use arrow to access the object's member, and I use dot to access the shared point itself's member. There is a very important pitfall that you need to be careful. Suppose I want to use the shared pointer in the main function also. Um, I'll create a dog. D equal to new dog. Let's call it a tank. And then I create a shared pointer dog P, which is constructed from the dog D. And, and then I create another shared pointer P2, also created from the dog tank. So now I would think that P and P2 are two shared pointers pointing to a tank. And when both P and P2 goes out of scope, the tank will be destroyed. Actually, this is a very bad way of using the shared pointer. So what has happened is when P is constructed from the dog's pointer D, P maintains a count value of 1. So P dot get use count equal to 1. And when P2 is constructed from the dog's pointer D, P2 also maintains a count of 1. P2 dot use count equal to 1. So when P goes out of scope, the dog tank will be destroyed. And when P2 goes out of scope, the dog tank will be destroyed again, which is uh, undefined behavior. So the key thing about using shared pointer that you should remember is an object should be assigned to a smart pointer as soon as it is created. Raw pointer should not be used again. And in this case, since we create an object, but we haven't immediately assigned it to a shared pointer, and later on we use the raw pointer again, so that causes the trouble. The correct way of using it is like this. Once the object is created, immediately assign to a shared pointer. And then later on, the, the object is only accessed through P2 or P, which are shared pointers. So this is a bad idea. And because this issue is so important, C++ has provided a shortcut way of wrapping an object with the shared pointer. So the shortcut is like this. Shared pointer dog p equal to make shared dog. And this function will take the parameter that you use to construct a dog. Tank. This is the preferred way of creating a shared pointer. It is even better than this one. Because this guy is not only faster, but also safer. If you look at this code, what has happened are at least two steps. Step one, gunner is created. And step two, p is created with the dog gunner. So it has two steps. While the makeshift function combines these two steps into one single step, 
so make shared is faster. And in addition to that, if you look at what happened here, what if the gunner is created successfully, but the shared pointer P has failed to be created, maybe because of memory allocation failure? Then the dog gunner will end up not being managed by a shared pointer, therefore it will not be deleted, and its memory will be leaked. So this code is not exception safe, but this code is exception safe. So as I said, once you have started using shared pointers, you should always use shared pointers to access those dynamically created objects. And as you've seen, a shared pointer can be used pretty much like a regular pointer. You can use the arrow operator because it is overload overloaded for shared pointer. You can even use the dereference operator. Bark. There's one more thing. With a raw pointer, we can cast it into a different type of pointer. Can we do that with shared pointer? Yes, we can. With shared pointer, there are a couple of special functions just for that purpose. There's a static pointer cast. There's a dynamic pointer cast. And there's a const pointer cast. So you can use these functions to cast a shared pointer just like you're casting a raw pointer. Thank you for watching. Feel free to subscribe to my channel and check out the other videos I have. See you next time.